and welcome back to another edition of Telescope Man. This is going to be number five in a series of beginner ham radio podcasts. And I'm going to try to cover a variety of subjects uh, during these, uh, these different podcasts. Today we're going to look at something that, uh, uh, if you're a guy, I don't know if you're a girl, maybe, maybe not. You know, when you go into Home Depot, what's the first place you go to? Well, you go to the tools section. That's obvious. And you look through all the tools. Well, today I'm going to show you some tools that are uh, very beneficial for amateur radio operators to have. Okay, so let's start <coughs> with the bag. So while I was at Home Depot, I found this little Stanley uh, tool bag. You know, wasn't very expensive, but it had a ton of pockets. Now, you know, when you have a bag like this, you've got to fill up all the pockets. You can't, cannot have a bag with a lot of pockets and the pockets are empty. So let's kind of go through this bag and see what I have in the bag that might be useful uh, in the amateur radio hobby. Okay, so if we look down in here in, in one of these little pockets, I've got a little Phillips screwdriver and a little regular screwdriver. Short handles because a lot of times you're uh, if you're working on uh, the inside of a radio you might not be able to get a long handle in there. So I've got two short handle screwdrivers in one of the pockets. Now in the other pockets I went out uh, and got, you know, a roll of electrical tape. So I've got a roll of electrical tape in there. Always taping up things. Let's see what else is in here. Oh, a little device that's sold by DX Engineering and supposedly has a patent on it. And what this is used for is when you're putting on a PL259 connector, you got a couple of choices. You can get some pliers, you know, and get it on there, turn it. A lot of times you scuff up the uh, coax, crush the coax, whatever. Well, the PL connector fits right in here, and then you can just turn it on. And they sell this little... Uh, PL259 uh, adapter over at uh, DX Engineering online. So I've got one of those. Let's see what's on the other side. Ah, I have a manual. And what's that manual to? It's to a multimeter. Okay, so I keep the manual in this bag. And then I went out and bought, <coughs> not a real expensive, uh, multimeter, okay, it's not real expensive, but it does everything I need it to do, which is to uh, check conductivity in a uh, cable run, you know, so I can tell if there's no shorts, or after I've completed it, uh, you know, I can test the ground, make sure the ground and the uh, is not connected to the uh, center conductor, which would be a short and wouldn't be any good. So anyway, went out and bought a little multimeter, and I kind of keep it in this little case that I happen to have laying around just to protect it. Okay, so I got a multimeter in there. Real handy. Also have one of these little bitty uh, nipping pliers, I call them, nipping pliers. Again, you can find them at DX Engineering and other places. And this is good for snipping off uh, the uh, <coughs> insulators in a uh, run of coax. You know, after you're, when you're putting it together and you fold back the uh, braid, and you, know, you got some rough edges where you can just snip those off with this little pair of snipping, I call them snipping pliers, snipping uh, cutters or pliers. Again, sold at DX Engineering. And of course, I've got a pair of the ubiquitous 
wire strippers. And you can find these everywhere. Just a pair of wire strippers in case I have to strip uh, the insulation off some wires. Then I've got some of these compression fitting uh, connectors you know, in different sizes, uh, all the way up to about 10 gauge, all the way up to about 10 gauge wire. So I have some of these in there. Oh, what else is in here? Oh boy, a roll of duct tape. You always need a roll of duct tape in your tool chest. Then <clears throat> I've got a pair of cable cutters, special cutters used to cut coax and it basically cuts it straight without crushing it. And again, these are specialized cutters uh, sold on a lot of uh, ham sites on the internet and of course on DX Engineering. They have them. And you can cut the coax without actually crushing it uh, during the cutting process. So I got a pair of those. Let's see, what else do I have in here? Uh, a few more connectors. Well, of course, I've got a pair of pliers. Got to have a pair of pliers. Never know when you're going to need a pair of pliers. So I've got that in there. Another big device. Anderson Power Pole uh, pair of pliers. With this thing, you can put on the Anderson Power Poles. And of course, it's got a slug in it. And you can buy different slugs for different amp uh, sizes in Anderson Power Poles. So I've got one of those special crimpers. Uh, that install Anderson power poles. Got that in there. Of course, I've got some Anderson power poles. Okay, I've got the uh, regular size Anderson power poles in here that you would use to connect up just about anything uh, for a regular radio. So I got some of those in there in case I need them out in the field. Then I've got some wire ties. You don't know how many different uses there are of wire ties in the ham radio hobby. So I always carry wire ties with me uh, in my toolbox in case I need them. Then I've got a little file because when you solder P, uh, PL259 connectors or other types of connectors, you usually have to file the tip a little bit. Uh, when you get done, just to get it nice and smooth, and if there's any bumps of solder, you can file them off with this. So I've got a little file in there to do that. <clears throat> then, of course, I've got a pair of needle nose pliers. Good pair of needle nose pliers. A lot of times, this is the only way you can get to something uh, to... Uh, you know, turn it, and it's also got its own cutter on it. So you can cut some small wire with this. If you're making an antenna or something out of 14 gauge wire, you can cut it with that. Then I've got another larger pair of screwdrivers. Again, a regular screwdriver and a Phillips head screwdriver. I've got a regular pair of those in there. And I always like to have one of these. Uh, it's the one with the removable head on it. And I've got a set of these little different uh, heads that you can put in here, you know, and change what you can drive with this uh, removable head screwdriver. So I've got one of those. Then I've got some washers. Uh, always need washers, You're doing your grounds on the back of the radio or whatever, you might need a washer to hold on that uh, ground wire or that braid. Then I've got that special grease, that uh, dielectric grease that you can put on connectors or on grounds to uh, kind of prevent corrosion. and. Again, they sell this all over the internet, and it's specially made for electrical connections. And I have a little bitty tube of that grease. 
in there. Well, let's see. i got to look through all the pockets because there's no telling what I'm going to find here. All right. I've got some what's called rescue tape. Now, I know this looks like uh, electrical tape, but it's not. It sticks to itself. There is no adhesive on it, so to speak, like on electrical tape. So what you do is, uh, if you're going to seal up some co uh, coax, you tape it with what I call rescue tape. Now, they sell this at most auto parts stores. So you can go in uh, AutoZone or one of those and probably find this. Uh, Walmart's also got it. And uh, <clears throat> what you do is you tape up the coax connector, that part that you just put the connector on to, to make it waterproof, you use this first and then you come behind it with the regular electrical tape over the top of it. What that uh, allows you to do is you can uh, basically undo it later if you ever needed to and you wouldn't have all that gummy stuff all over the coax and everything else that comes out of that uh, regular electrical tape. So you do it with this first and then you follow it with electrical tape to make a good um, waterproof uh, connection. In. And then of course I have the best tool in the kit. And this is a special coax cutter, again sold over at D DX Engineering. Really works great. One end prepares the tip, and the other end prepares the uh, bottom part of it where the, uh, where the braid is inside of the coax, and it cuts it perfectly. You don't have to worry about, you know, how many inches or anything like that. Or you just start with the, uh, the uh, number one end. It even shows you on here, do this first. And then you turn it over and do it on the other side. And you get a perfect uh, connection cut on the coax using this tool. Okay, and again, they sell this at DX Engineering. And it's a special coax cutter. Now, there's a couple of different size ones you can buy. I bought the one for uh, uh, 213. RG213 and LMR400, which is the two sizes I normally use for HF. So it'll do uh, 8U, it'll do uh, uh, 213, it'll do LMR400. Uh, won't do the uh, RG8, regular 8, or the 58, or the real little ones, you know, like you might find at Radio Shack. It won't do those. There is another tool that does the smaller ones. So this is probably the best of all the tools I've shown you in the case is this right here. It's a little coax tool. And really it's very simple. You just stick the coax in there and start turning and it makes a perfect cut at the perfect depth too. So you don't have to worry about that. Great tool. And uh, one of my Elmers uh, showed me this. He had one. Uh, when I first got in the hobby, and I didn't know how to do PL259 uh, connectors, went over his house, and using this tool, he did one just almost instantly, uh, and I said, one of these days, I'm going to get me one of those, and I did, finally. So that's my tool kit. Remember, I do keep the little book for the multimeter. In case I need to look up something, I keep that in the in the bag. So that's what I've got in this bag right now. All right, and uh, all of these tools are pretty darn handy when you're out in the field. Okay, and so I gathered them all up in this bag right here, and then I can just pick this bag up and carry it out, and I've got everything I need. The only thing I don't have here that you act actually need is a soldering station. I keep that in the garage because uh, I do my soldering usually outside. So if I was going to go somewhere and 
and do some work, I would grab the little soldering station that I have out in the garage and throw it in this bag. That's probably the uh, another important piece of equipment that you need. And with that said, as I usually do, I wish you clear skies. Go to the tool store this Christmas and buy all these tools and get you a bag. And remember to keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night. 73, see y'all